Hi everyone, we are from group 6 and our group member consists of me, Tan Kelly, Siti Noor Asikin, Muhammad Jaris, Noshada Sofia and Aman Akram. We are going to show you some information about vaccine in this video. So first of all, what is vaccine? Vaccine is a preparation that is used to stimulate the body's immune system against disease. It is usually administered through needle injections, but some can be administered by mouth or spray in the nose. So, how vaccine is produced? Vaccine is produced by inactivating the virus, by using the part of the pathogen, by weakening the virus, and also by using the part of the genetic code. For your information, there are many types of vaccines. First of all, inactivated or killed vaccines. It is used a form of the pathogen that has been killed or inactivated so it cannot cause disease. For example, uh, the inactivated polio vaccine and the inactivated flu vaccines which is function and not contain live virus. People who receive this do not shed the virus and can use the vaccine that cannot cause disease. The next type is live attenuated vaccine which is a use a form of the virus or bacteria that has been weakened so it can cause severe disease for example measles, mumps, rubella MMR vaccine and the yellow fever vaccine for the next type is subunit recombinant or conjugate vaccines which is only a part of the pathogen such as a protein or a sugar examples human papillomavirus vaccine meningococcal vaccine and many more so we move to the latest vaccines which is mRNA vaccines and DNA vaccines. mRNA is a new type of vaccine which is used genetic material to instruct cells to make a protein that triggers an immune response. For example, we know Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. And for the DNA vaccines, it is also a newer type of vaccines which is deliver a small piece of genetic material called plasmid DNA into the body which is uh, this DNA instructs the cells to produce a protein that triggers an immune response so actually how vaccine works vaccine works introducing a small harmless piece of the pathogen such as a protein or a piece of genetic material into the body which will trigger the immune system to produce a response including the production of antibodies which can recognize and fight the actual pathogen if the person is exposed to it in the future. When the immune system encounters the harmless piece of the pathogen in a vaccine, it produces a response similar to what it would do if it encountered the actual pathogen. This response typically includes the production of antibodies which can recognize and fight the actual virus or bacteria if the person is exposed to it in the future. By preparing the immune system in this way, vaccines can help protect against infection and disease caused by the actual pathogen. Some vaccines like mRNA and COVID-19 vaccines work by providing a genetic code to the cells that help them to produce a protein that mimics the virus that the body recognizes as foreign and produces the immunity response. It's worth noting that vaccines do not guarantee 100% protection and their efficacy can vary depending on the type of vaccine, the population being vaccinated, and the disease in question. Vaccines are still considered to be one of the most effective ways to protect people from infectious diseases and safe lives. Next, we are going to look into the differences between vaccine and drugs. My teammate has already explained about vaccine, so now we will look into the definition of drugs. Drugs are chemical, herbal, or biological products used to diagnose, cure, treat, or prevent disease. So, what differentiates both is vaccines are classically administered to prevent the appearance of a medical problem, while drugs are generally administered to treat a medical problem. Moving to the next, you might ask, is the vaccine safe? Well, I'm going to answer your question. Remember you are being administered with a particle of certain pathogens that causes the disease, so surely you will have a side effect. 
but not as worse as the disease itself. You may encounter pain, redness or swelling when the shot was given. Fever, fatigue, headache and muscle pain, most of it will go away within a few days. If you experience persistent stomach pain, severe or persistent headache or blurred vision and chest pain, it is advised to seek medical intervention immediately. This is nothing to worry about because the US Department of Health quotes that only 1 to 2 in 1 million people will face severe vaccine effects. Now, we look at the importance of vaccine in spreading awareness among the public. The importance are saving lives. Vaccine has saved many lives by preventing the spread of infectious disease. Next, preventing the spread of disease. Vaccines can help prevent the spread of disease, both within a population and across borders. This is important for controlling and preventing pandemics. Next, protection against serious and potentially deadly diseases. Vaccine activate an immune response that copy a natural infection allowing the body to recognize and fight the disease in future. Raising awareness about the importance of vaccine can help to make sure more people are vaccinated, which can help prevent the spread of disease and save many lives. Last but not least, herd immunity. When a large percentage of a population is immune to a disease, it becomes difficult for the disease to spread. Now we move to the next section, which is how vaccines are given. Here, we listed three ways vaccines are given. The first one is intramuscular that use inactivated vaccine injected into the muscle layer of tissue at 90 degree angle. The second one is subcutaneous vaccine which are administrated into subcutaneous or fatty layer beneath the skin at 45 degree angle. And the last one is the intradermal vaccine that are administrated into the outer layers of skin between the epidermis and dermis at 5 to 15 degree angle. Then, let us move to the last part, which is the challenges in producing a vaccine. The first one is the equipment and material shortage, such as natural rubber, vial, syringe, flow filters, and cobalt-60 for irradiation and sterilization. The second one is manufacturing process complexity, as any drugs and vaccine use must undergo a long process to get approval by the WHO before distributing it. And last one is to ensure the vaccine produced must be enough for all. That's all from us. Thank you.